Hi YouTube, in this video we have a sequence of functions and we're going to prove that it converges to zero pointwise on the interval zero one. So first let's recall what it means for a sequence of functions to converge pointwise. So in this problem we have a sequence f sub n and it's defined on the interval zero one, that's the domain, into the set of real numbers r, that's the codomain. And we'll say that a sequence of functions f sub n converges to f pointwise on 0, 1 if for every epsilon greater than 0 and for every x in our set 0, 1 we can find some positive integer n notice that it could depend on both epsilon and x such that for all little n bigger than capital N the distance between f sub n of x and f of x is less than epsilon. So let's go ahead and prove this. So proof. Actually, before we prove it, um, we have to figure out the proof. So let's do the scratch work over here. So scratch work. All right, so we start the proof by picking an epsilon greater than 0 and taking a number x in 0, 1. So the easiest case is if x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, then f sub n of 0, that's just going to be 0, because you get n times 0 up here, and then so the whole thing is 0. In this case, we can choose any n, and then we look at the difference between f sub n of 0 and 0, which is the limit. So we get 0 minus 0, which is 0, and that's less than epsilon. So if x is 0, we can choose any n, and the proof is complete. If x is not equal to 0, right, if x is not equal to 0, then we look at the difference uh, f sub n of x and 0, and we want this to be less than epsilon. This can be rewritten as the absolute value of nx e to the negative nx, and we want that to be less than epsilon x is in 0, 1, so we can drop the absolute value because x is positive, right, because x is not 0. So this can be written as nx, and furthermore, you can bring down the exponential function, e to the nx, and you want this to be less than epsilon. So if you were trying to figure this out for the first time, um, this is probably where you would have the most difficulty, right? So my thinking here is that we can use the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Recall that e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And the thinking for this is that here you have an exponential function, and here you have a polynomial function. And so you have to get rid of the exponential function. So you have to compare the exponential to a polynomial. Well, this is one easy way to do it. Um, so let's write the Maclaurin for e to the nx. We can do that by replacing all of the x's with nx. So it'll be nx quantity squared over 2 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And which one do we compare it to? Well, it's up to us, but um, I think it might be more beneficial to compare it to something greater than degree 1, because we have a degree 1 polynomial in the numerator. So let's compare it to this one. So this infinite sum is certainly greater than nx quantity squared over 2 factorial. And now in our inequality up here, we have e to the nx on the bottom. So let's solve this for 1 over e to the nx. We can do that in one move by multiplying by the reciprocal of the right-hand side and dividing by e to the nx. So we have 2 over the quantity nx squared greater than 1 over e to the nx. I'm going to write that again as 1 over e to the nx less than 2 over nx quantity squared. All right, let's rewrite this jumbled mess up here. So we have, let me change color here. So this is nx e to the nx. You can write this as nx times 1 over e to the nx. So this is less than, right, this piece here is the same as this piece here. So this nx here hangs out. And you can replace that circled piece with 
2 over nx quantity squared. And this is 2 over nx. And we want this to be less than epsilon. Right? Our goal is to find a positive integer n. So now we can solve for little n. Right? We can multiply both sides by little n. So we get 2 over x less than n epsilon. Divide by epsilon. That gives us 2 over epsilon x less than n. So n is bigger than 2 over epsilon x. So then in the proof, we can choose our capital N to be greater than 2 over epsilon x. Right? Epsilon is greater than 0. X is not equal to 0. So this number makes sense. Right? This is a real number. So via the property of Archimedes, the Archimedean property, we can choose a natural number that is bigger than this one. So given any real number, you can find a natural number that is bigger. It's called the Archimedean property. And that's how we're able to choose our capital N. So let's go ahead and carefully, carefully write the proof. So we'll start the proof by letting epsilon be greater than 0 and choosing an x in 0, 1. So let's do that. So we'll let x, oh sorry, we'll, be, we'll let epsilon be greater than 0 and we'll let x be in 0, 1. Okay, let's, let's take cases. Let's take cases. So if x is equal to 0, well, if x is equal to 0, we did it here, we can choose any n, right? So choose any n. Choose any positive integer n. It doesn't matter, right? It does not matter. Then for all little n bigger than capital N, right? So for all little n bigger than capital N, we look at the difference f sub n of 0 and 0. And we know that's 0 minus 0 which is equal to 0, which is less than epsilon. And so the proof is done if x is equal to 0, right? So it's, it's trivial. Uh, but notice we formalized it pretty well here, right? If x is 0, we chose our n. Then for all little n bigger than n, we look at this difference. So it's been proven for x equals 0. If x is not equal to 0, right? x is not equal to 0, we're going to choose I believe we said n greater than 2 over epsilon x. Let me just go down there and look. Let's scroll down and look. Yes. See, we had to use a different n, right? We had to use a different n whenever x is not equal to 0, right? We're showing pointwise convergence. So n can depend on um, x. So it's a different n. When x is 0, we can use any n. Um, in this case, we have to choose n bigger than this. So I can't write this down if x is 0, right? So there's, there's an issue, right? There's an issue. So choose n greater than 2 over epsilon x. Then for all little n bigger than capital N, we have to look at the difference. So f sub n of x minus 0. And we know that's nx e to the negative nx minus 0, so just that. And we know we can drop the absolute value and write it like this, nx over e to the nx. And we know we can write this as nx times 1 over e to the nx. And we can use this inequality here as we did before. So this is less than nx times 2 over nx quantity squared, which is equal to 2 over nx. So let's be a little more formal here. After this, in our scratch work, we did some, some backwards thinking to find n. Right? We solved for n. So let's go back and do that a little more formally. So since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than 2 over epsilon x, right? let's go ahead and solve this for um, 1 over n so we can make it less than epsilon. So this means that little n is bigger than 2 over epsilon x. Right, so we're going to solve this for 1 over n because it ends on the bottom. Okay, so I'm uh, going to multiply by the reciprocal here. So we get epsilon x over 2 times n bigger than 1. Then divide by n. So we get epsilon x over 2 greater than 1 over n. So 1 over n is less than epsilon x over 2. So what we're doing here is we're formalizing the proof, right? We're making sure we carefully show that this quantity is less than epsilon. To do that, you look at the n, it's on the bottom, so you solve for 1 over n, right? So now let's go back and restate what we did. 
So thus, thus, I'm going to rewrite this piece. So the difference between f sub n of x minus 0, it's important to let the reader know what you did. So go back, restate what you did. This is equal to, we said it was nx over e to the nx. Just skip some steps and got there. And it's less than 2 over nx. It's not necessary to go through all of this again. We just did it. And we can write this as 1 over n times 1 over x. And 1 over n is less than epsilon x over 2. So this is less than epsilon x over 2 times 1 over x. Right? Did I do that right? I think I did that right. Oh, and I forgot my 2 here. I knew there was something off. So here's my 2. So here's my 2. And then these cancel. These cancel. And so you get epsilon. And the proof is complete. Right? So again, we have 2 over nx. We wrote that as 1 over n times 2 over x. And then 1 over n is less than this. So we replace it. The 2's cancel. The x's cancel. And we get epsilon. And so we've shown that the sequence of functions converges pointwise to 0. So just to reiterate, when you're writing the proof, you, know, you take cases. right? You start with your epsilon greater than 0. You pick your x. If x is 0, we can choose any n. It doesn't matter. Just choose any one you want. Then for all little n bigger than n, it's done. If x is not 0, we have to choose this specific one, right? this specific one that's bigger than this number. So we can't write this in the first case because x is 0. So it does need to be separated. right? So uh, big N does depend on x in this problem. And that's why we have pointwise convergence instead of what's called uniform convergence. It turns out that this sequence of functions does not converge uniformly to 0 on this interval. Uh, maybe I'll make a video for that uh, another day. So I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.